So it's actually been years since I've owned a DJI gimbal. The last one was the DJI Ronin M. But to be fair, I've used DJI gimbal since then. I've used the RS2, the RS3, borrowed it from friends to test them out. But personally, I've just owned and used Jiyun gimbals for the past like five years. And I've been using the Crane 4 for all of my professional stuff. And honestly, it's a really powerful gimbal with a huge payload capacity. And it's a great gimbal that produces smooth shots. But when DJI came out with the RS4, I said, screw it. I bought my first DJI gimbal in forever. And I wanna compare the two brands to see if one of them comes out as the winner. Also, if you guys didn't know, last week I was in Vegas for NAB 2024 and there was just so much that happened. It was honestly one of the best experiences of my life and stick to the end of the video if you wanna see a recap of that. But all right, let's go ahead and just dive right into it and start testing the RS4. So my idea to compare the two gimbals is pretty straightforward. How well do each of the gimbals handle a minimal setup like this A7S III with a camera cage and a 24 to 70 F2.8 G Master? How do they do with things like walking shots, running shots, orbit shots, and follow shots? Let's find out. Comparison, the Crane 4 footage ends up looking a bit shaky. Partially that's probably due to the fact that it's a heavier setup in general, but overall the RS4 footage looks smoother with the same amount of effort put into getting the same shot. Now, the Crane 4 footage is perfectly usable and if you throw a warp stabilizer on top, you get a perfect looking gimbal shot. But the fact that the RS4 looks so good right out of camera with minimal need for stabilizing is a win. Yo, Ethan! So uh, I got a photo shoot in like 10 minutes. I'm gonna put you to work. I'm gonna give you the DJI RS4. I'm gonna have you get me some BTS shots. That cool? Perfect, let's go. One of the drawbacks of me buying the RS4 is that it only has a payload capacity of six and a half pounds. And even if I got the RS4 Pro, that still only has a payload capacity of 10 pounds, whereas the Jiyun Crane 4 has a payload capacity of like 13 pounds. So it does limit the size of the rig that you can mount and stabilize on this gimbal. But really, I think the largest setup I'd probably mount and run is something like a 70 to 200 uh, F28 GM Mark II on an A7S III with a camera cage. So let's go ahead and throw this on the gimbal, get it balanced, and see what kind of results we can get. DJI has kind of always led the charge when it comes to creating high quality products and the RS4 has all of the premium feeling and looking features. Though I'd say both brands have produced pretty excellent products over the years. The DJI RS4 can break down into an extremely travel friendly size, a unique feature that I'm a fan of and is pretty comfortable to use thanks to it only weighing 2.3 pounds. The angled roll arm design should allow for most camera setups to be successfully balanced and have full range of motion. But I imagine if you want to get a proper cinema rig going, you're going to want to get the RS4 Pro or the Jiyun Crane 4 since they are not only are rated for a heavier payload but have a larger cradle area to accommodate the bigger setup. You'll control the gimbal from the interface on the back of the gimbal that features a joystick for manual control of the gimbal head, a record button, a mode button, and switches on each side to quickly switch between certain modes like pan tilt follow, pan follow, and first person view. The gimbal also has a touchscreen that will give you access to the rest of the gimbal's features and it's incredibly easy to navigate. Compared to the Jiyun Crane 4, I actually use this touchscreen a lot more just because the layout of the menu is just much more easily usable. And on top of that, there's a lot more features and controls and settings in the RS4 menu that is actually useful, like changing your follow speed from slow, medium to high. And this is my favorite feature. It's been around since the RS3, but it's the auto lock functionality. When you power down, it automatically folds the gimbal up and engages the locks, so everything is nice and tidy and is easy to move around with, and nothing is like dangling and swinging around. And when you're ready to shoot, when it powers back up, it'll unlock everything and be ready to go. This feature is just, 
Like I knew I'd like this feature, but after actually using it in person for an entire day, I, I would genuinely switch gimbals just for this feature alone. All right, let's talk about the battery life between the two gimbals. The DJI RS4 has a claimed battery life of up to 12 hours of runtime, and it can be recharged in two and a half hours. Gimbals these days have become so efficient when it comes to power management, especially if you balance it correctly. Now I haven't used the RS4 on like a full day event shoot like a wedding yet, but I did use the Crane 4 from Jiyun at weddings a lot. And that one also has a 12 hour claimed runtime. And with that, I actually, you know, would shoot with the gimbal, set it down, leave the gimbal on with everything, you know, set up as it is. So I could switch over to my handheld rig to get shots and then run back and use my gimbal rig again. And I've had it run for me for an entire wedding day without it running out of battery. And I'd say that both gimbals are spectacular when it comes to this category of battery life. But there's one thing that the RS4 can do that the Jiyun Crane 4 can't, and that is the fact that the battery is detachable. Meaning that if it is a gimbal heavy shooting day and you do somehow manage to run this battery down to zero, you could always have a second battery on hand ready to swap in and you're good to go. And something I've been saying for years now is that I much prefer a replaceable or detachable battery for electronics like gimbals, especially if you're planning to own these pieces of equipment for years to come. And that's because batteries like these over time, their battery life cycles diminish. So as you keep using them, um, something like the Crane 4 with an integrated battery in like four or five years, it might only be able to charge up to 75%. And then now you're just stuck with a gimbal that can only run for let's say up to nine hours instead of the 12 hours that you originally got it for. And with something like the Crane 4, there's not really a way to replace the battery. But with something like the RS4, if say the battery over the years gets bad, then you can always just buy a new battery and then just replace it and you don't have that issue anymore. So between these two gimbals, which one should you buy? Well, let's start off with the Jiyun Crane 4. Pound for pound, the Crane 4 is the more powerful option, even when compared to the RS4 Pro. You just can't discount that raw power being able to run your heavier setups. Whether it's because you have a heavy cine zoom mounted on there or you upgrade to a larger camera body like an FX6, this gimbal will be able to handle it like a champ. If you shoot live events like weddings, concerts, or parties, the built-in LED fill light is actually extremely useful. When you go to shoot in those get it or lose it moments, you don't have time to set up external lights and having an on-camera light ready to be turned on in a moment's notice is super clutch and you'll be happy you had it than not. On top of that, a quality of life feature that you don't realize you want or need until you try it is the wrist rest attachment on the Crane 4. When you're shooting on a gimbal, you're basically always putting pressure on your wrist if you're leaning your gimbal forward and this accessory does so much to alleviate that fatigue. This is one of those features that I didn't realize just how good it was until I shot an eight hour wedding and having it really saved my wrist after a long shoot. And the Crane 4 also has these LED lights on each of the axes. So when you're balancing your gimbal, you can very quickly identify when your gimbal's not properly balanced, which can lead to micro jitters in your footage and worse battery performance. Okay, now why should you choose the DJI RS4 or RS4 Pro? DJI has really perfected gimbal performance after all of these years. It's super plug and play, making it dumb easy to just pick up and get incredible looking shots. It's honestly the superior stabilizer when it comes to getting that floaty looking footage. It has the better user design with switches that you'd use often, like a switch to go between pan follow, pan till, and FPV being placed right on the gimbal. On top of that, making adjustments to the gimbal smoothness and speed in the menus is extremely easy. Overall, the DJI RS4 software is just more well thought out. It's also a much more robust ecosystem that goes beyond just stabilization. For example, if you want to shoot with a manual focus lens, you can actually use this system with DJI's LiDAR system, letting you add autofocus to manual focus lenses or cameras. And let's say you're working on a team and you need to get that image transmission so that somebody else can pull focus or just preview what you're seeing and what you're shooting. DJI have their own wireless video transmission system that you could integrate into the system super easily. So where do I stand between these two gimbals? Am I switching? Kind of. Both of these gimbals do what I need them to do. If I'm shooting an event or shooting a wedding, they're both great stabilizers. Honestly, if I know that it's gonna be a long gimbal focused shooting day, like a wedding, I'm probably gonna to lean towards the Crane 4. I know it might sound a little bit silly, but that wrist rest plus that sling grip is actually extremely ergonomic and makes shooting with a gimbal all day long incredibly easy. And since I'm only typically adding slow movements and I'm not like sprinting with the full gimbal setup, the stabilization I get from the Crane 4 is plenty enough. 
But if I'm gonna travel with a gimbal, then I'm probably gonna use the RS4. I mean, it's compact, the fact that it can break down and pack away super neatly, and it's a great stabilizer. And on top of that, this might sound really silly, but that auto locking feature is actually extremely useful. It's such a huge quality of life improvement, being able to single tap the power button to put it to sleep so it just locks, or if I just turn off the gimbal, it folds itself up, making it really easy to carry around with a grip like this this and you know move to the next place I'm shooting instead of having to turn it off move everything lock everything back down carry it go like 20 feet unlock it start it back you know like it's just it, it's it's such a small thing but it actually is so useful and on top of that, the fact that I can get smoother results out of the RS4 is super handy. I can get really good results if I have really good form with the Crane 4, but if I just want to get a shot and I don't want to focus on perfect gimbal operating form, then the RS4 really nails that part of stabilization. If you already own one or the other, there's really not a good reason to switch from one to the other, honestly. They're both great gimbals. But if you're, you know, if you own neither and you're looking to get your first big boy gimbal, hopefully this video was helpful in helping you figure out which one you'd prefer. If you want to check out either gimbals, I'll have links in the description down below. All right, let's talk about NAB 2024. This is genuinely one of my top five memories of all time. It's not just about all the cool gear that came out, which there was a ton of new cameras, accessories, and a bunch of product launches at the Small Rig booth, like Potato Jet's new upcoming tripod co design with Small Rig, but it was the fact that I got to spend so much time catching up with my favorite creators and friends in a way that's only possible in real life, talking shop about YouTube and honestly just catching up on life. Seriously, if we had the chance to talk this year at NAB, I just want to say thank you for adding to such an amazing experience and I can't wait to be back in Vegas next year for NAB 2025. Hello YouTube channel, how's it going? Are you subscribed? If you're not subscribed, that thing better be check thing, right? Next the, to the, it, the, 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 the like thing, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you got to go to the previous videos and like it. If you're not, you're, you're doing it wrong. Guys, doing it wrong. The potato himself said it, so you have to do it now. It's a fact. Yeah. Or else 12 years of bad luck or something like that. Right? I don't know if that's, yeah, you don't yeah. want that. You don't, you don't want, want that. that. No. Ha, 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 ha.